Hey there, geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Or if this is your first time joining us, welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're talking about 1.5. We're going to be looking at human environment interaction. Last time we looked at 1.4 and we talked about a bunch of different spatial concepts. Some of these concepts will come up again in this video, but we're really delving now into the physical characteristics of a place and also how a place can shape and transform a culture and society. Now you've probably heard about human environment interaction from the five themes of geography. And if you need a refresher on the five themes, check out my five themes of geography Minecraft edition. It's a great video that covers all the five themes of geography while using Minecraft. Now what this standard is really all about is relationships. This standard's all about trying to understand how we as humans shape and impact the environments we live in and how those environments shape and impact us as society, as people. It's no secret that humans have a huge impact on the environment. We cut down trees to build houses. We pave over farmlands to build roads. We drive cars on those roads that emit CO2 that warms the earth. We have a lot of impact on the earth that we live in. But the real question that a lot of people don't think about is how does the environment shape society? How does the environment impact our culture, our day-to-day -day lives? How is it changing us? And when we start to ask these questions, we really see just how big of an impact the environment has on us. From what clothes we wear, to what types of houses we build, to our dietary preferences, or what crops we grow. Even down to the color of our skin it has to do with geography and where our ancestors live. And since we're talking about the environment, sustainability is undoubtedly going to come up. It's going to come up in every single one of these units throughout this whole class. So it's important for you to understand what it means. When you're thinking about sustainability, in order to live a sustainable lifestyle, what that means is, are you living in a way that you can meet your wants and needs, the things that you need to survive and the things you want to have but don't need to survive, without impacting the ability of future generations to meet their wants and needs? For example, a need is food, but a want might be going to Chipotle. I really want to go to Chipotle and I really like Chipotle, and Chipotle is food, yes, but I don't need to have Chipotle to survive. I need food, yes, but I don't need Chipotle. So in order for societies to be sustainable. They have to figure out how they're going to allocate their land. How are they going to serve the needs and wants of their citizens? But at the same time, they have to be aware that to be a sustainable society, they have to make sure that they are preserving their resources for future generations to use. All right, now that we've talked about sustainability, let's swing back to the environment and how it shapes us or how we shape the environment. And I want you to try to think about something. It's not too complicated. What I want you to answer is this. Is the environment or people more important in the success of a society? Which one impacts the other more? Is it the environment that allows a society to thrive? And the environment is the one that creates the culture? Or can people modify and shape the environment, regardless of how harsh it is, to be able to survive and succeed? What do you think? If you're leaning towards that it's the environment that allows culture to thrive and society to thrive, then you might be a believer of environmental determinism. This is the idea that the environment is the driver for societal development. Environments are what allow a culture to thrive and grow and it shapes them. It also allows societies to succeed or fail. Some geographic locations are destined to fail and people who locate there will not be able to be as successful as people in other regions because the environment will be hindering them. So according to environmental determinism, it's the environment that's going to allow you to thrive or fail. Culture doesn't have as big of a role. People don't have as big of a role. The environment is what shapes and creates everything and allows for opportunities or denies opportunities to society. Now, some people have criticized environmental determinism for promoting colonialism and having more of a Eurocentric view. Others have also criticized it, saying that it's not just the environment that's going to dictate the outcome of a society. People have a lot of say as well, and cultures can play a huge role in the outcome of their society. And if you're leaning more towards this side, then you're probably in favor of environmental possibilism. This is the idea that, yes, the environment is there and it has an impact on society, but people also have an impact on the environment, and they have a lot more of a say in their own success than what environmental determinism gives them. The environment can be shaped and modified by culture, and culture will continue to adapt and change to the environment. And over time, it's up to the culture and the people living there if they're going to succeed or fail. So you can see both these theories are just dealing with relationships. They're looking at people, they're looking at the environment, and it's trying to understand how they work together and how they influence each other. And that was our quick summary of 
of Unit 1, Topic 5. Now make sure you join me next time when we'll go into 1.6, Scale of Analysis. This video is going to be really important for you to watch because Scale of Analysis is a concept that a lot of students get tripped up on. And don't worry though, you're not going to make that mistake because you're going to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when the next video comes out and that way you won't miss it. All right, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, geographers, I'll see you next time online.